It didn't announce recording in progress. There we go. It did on our end, we could hear it. Okay, it is my distinct honor to introduce our speaker today, who's Allison Field Juma. I've been pronouncing your name wrong all these years. <laughs> and, um, and and I have known her you know, when I became a member of the River Stewart organization for the uh, Suasco River. Saint, and Allison will tell us a little bit about that. But Allison is a real expert in our area on rivers and also speaks almost nationally on rivers from time to time, um, sharing what we do here in New England and gathering with what are going on and other things. At the very beginning, we were one of the 11 wild and scenic ri rivers in the whole United States. So having, and Allison was a big mover in getting that stuff started too. So it's my honor to welcome Allison Field Jumer to the Rotary Club of Bedford, and I'll clip on this thing for you just use. Do I just hold it like this? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I think I have to be there to advance the slides. Or no, I'll tell somebody, if I could tell someone else to advance oh, them. Oh, yes. I'm happy to do that, and then you can point that Oh, camera. but that's pointing at me. It's just because, I don't know, I think this will work. <laughs> that's why. I think it'll work. Um, and it's it's a PDF, so it takes someone just scrolling it gently. Thank you. So thank you, everybody. I hope you can hear me well. Thank you so much for having me today. And I'm going to uh, try not to speak super fast, but still get the information in. I have met with you a couple times before. One, I'm, we're passing around right now a Concord River recreation map, which Rotary contributed to. And we're very grateful for, and I'm giving you also for the folks who are in the room, the handout, just because it's so much easier to see on the handout, I think, than your small screens. If you want to give them back to me later, that's fine, or keep it or give it to a neighbor who has questions, whatever you'd like to do with it. So um, I'm, thank you so much for this time because we've talked a lot with folks in Bill Ricca, but you're upstream of the project I'm gonna speak about. And so it will affect you too. So um, Ralph and I agreed it would make a lot of sense to talk with folks in, in Bedford. So what we're going to talk about is a project in North Billerica, which is to remove the Talbot Mills Dam. Has, do any, has anybody seen the Talbot Mills Dam? Do you know what I'm referring to? Yes. One person, okay. I at least live in Billerica. <laughs> yeah, it's near the um, Middlesex Canal Museum. There's two big mill buildings. You'll see a picture, but so it may ring a bell. How many people here have ever fished in the Concord River? Yeah, okay. Yeah. How many people have paddled a boat or motored a boat or something? So you know the river a little bit. Yes, we have the Concord River too. Yeah, I have on, on purpose and by mistake. <laughs> so, and it was really nice. And I just want to say, we did when we were launching we were launching this i know i recognize some of you it was a little while ago so we all look different but we've done two yep so um what i wanted to do was give you a little bit of an overview of the project and then really have a few minutes left i hope at the end to answer questions um I would like to tell you for half an hour about our organization, but I won't do that. But if you're interested, I'll just send this around. If you'd like to be on, just on a email list where you get um, any updates about this project, or if you'd like to be to get regular or stuff, we have a fun newsletter called Otter News, all the news you ought to know, um, that uh, just pop your name on there. And one commercial on the movie coming up. Oh, like we have. Up? Oh, Wild and Scenic, I didn't bring, uh, our Wild and Scenic River um, Film Festival is coming up um, ooh, next week, I think. Yeah. And so that's exciting. And if you go to our website, you can uh, buy tickets and learn all about it. It's both virtual and in-person in Maynard. Yes. I have a quick question. I, I did some research on what you were gonna talk about. Yeah. And you know what I couldn't find? What? What in the world is forward? Ah, it's such a good question. It gives me the opportunity to tell you because it's not obvious. Yeah, and actually there was an article in the Lowell Sun today that 
got it uh, wrong, but it's not their fault because it is confusing. So we were formed as the organization for the Assabet River, which is O-A-R. And then in 2010, we added the Sudbury and Concord Rivers to have the whole watershed. And we couldn't find a name that worked. I mean, the acronyms were horrible. So somebody said, well, why don't you just put an S on the end and be done with it? So that's what we did. So it's not, it's not an acronym. It's just ORS. We are just ORS. O-A-R-S, all capitals. That's it. It's the Sudbury, Concord, and Assabet Rivers, which I'm about to tell you about now. So here's a picture of our watershed. Our watershed is about is 399 square miles. It's on the right-hand side of the, that screen. And on the left, you'll see that it's part of a much bigger watershed, which is the Merrimack River watershed that starts up in the White Mountains and Lake Winnipesaukee in New Hampshire, flows south, gets into Massachusetts, takes a hard eastward turn, and flows out to, um, out to the uh, Atlantic Ocean in Newburyport at Plum Island. And so there are several watersheds in Massachusetts that uh, flow into it. And if you were a fish coming from the Atlantic Ocean, we would be the second left turn <laughs> off the river. So out of a lot of left and right turns. So that is um, why this is significant because this dam removal project would open more river miles than any other project in Massachusetts. And so, um, it's a state priority project because there's a very great concern that the fish in the Atlantic Ocean uh, are, well, we know the fisheries are struggling. I heard on the radio coming in that they're just now limiting the haddock, haddock catch. People are very upset. The fishing community is very upset about this, but it's because one reason is those fish don't have enough to eat and what they need to eat is the migratory fish, the river herring, the shad, um, that this project would help to bring back up to really good population size. So what's so interesting, I think, for a lot of us is that sitting here, we have a direct relationship to the Gulf of Maine fisheries. And what we do up here could affect the health of those fisheries, the health of the, the commercial fishery there, as well as sports fishing. So let's see what I put on the next slide. And all those little dots there, all those little red dots on the right-hand one, those are dams. So um, we have a lot of work ahead of us. But the biggest, the, 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 the only remaining, the only dam that is between the Gulf of Maine and this whole upper watershed uh, that the fish can't get past right now is this one. So that's why it's so significant. They can get up to this point and they can't get any further. And there, there's no fish ladder. There is no fish ladder. There, well, there was one built a long time ago that didn't work, and it's been filled in. It was non-functional. Um, so this is this is the site itself. It's in North Billerica, and um, you know, it's a little hard to see from here. But you've got two big old mill buildings. You've got a a road which is kind of obscuring the dam in this picture. You can see the dam there, um, where the white water is. And this dam was uh, has a long, long, long history. And it was um, built, you know, originally as these dams are. They, at first there was a small one, then there was a bigger one, and then there was a bigger one. And, but it's built on a waterfall. So this was a place where native people had a lot of, um, you know, set, were there. There's a lot of archeological evidence of their um, having, uh, you know, middens of shells and fish there. So it was a, a fishing site way back. And then of more recent history, it became a site for mills. And then after that, you, I don't know if you have heard of the Middlesex Canal, but it was a very important piece of, of our um, industrial revolution. It linked the mills in Lowell to Boston. And you can imagine how important that was to get all of the manufacturing in Lowell directly to Boston. Because if they just went out the Merrimack River, they'd end up in Newburyport, which is really not where they wanted to be. So the Middlesex Canal connected those two very important sites. And the way it did it was it had water from this impoundment going in both directions. It went, it would go one way to Lowell and then east to Boston. 
And so, because of the, it was actually sort of a high point, although that sounds a bit odd, but with the dam, it was a high point and the water could flow in both directions. So that was very cool. It unfortunately didn't last terribly long because the railroads came in and basically the Erie Canal and all these other canals fell into disuse because railways were seen as a much more efficient way of moving those goods around. So that's kind of in a nutshell, the history of that dam and it is no longer serves any purpose except that people have grown up with it. It's been there. It's part of people's history. Um, it's valued because it's part of their community, but it's not serving a purpose in terms of industry or electric generation or anything like that. Um, it is actually causing a problem on the other hand uh, that it, it holds the water back. And so that water becomes quite stagnant it's very bad habitat for fish. It's, it's low oxygen in the water. It gets heated up. There's a lot of invasive plants there. There's a huge population of invasive water chestnut. And, and it also blocks the movement of fish up and down. So the owner of the dam, an individual who used to own one of these factories, he doesn't want the dam anymore. He has an office, a letter from the Office of Dam Safety that says he needs to make changes to it because it is not, it cannot pass a large flood. So where flooding is increasing with climate change, we're seeing much more intense rainfall, more frequent big floods. And this dam is not prepared to pass that flood without creating flooding upstream. So that is a, the diet land dam owner, he ha they have to fix it. I guess that's a logical conclusion, but I don't know, honestly. He doesn't, he ha, he's seen the expense of doing that. He has to have liability insurance on the dam. So it's, an ex, it's a big expense and he, ha, he sees no point in it from his family's point of view. Um, he's retired. They don't own the factory anymore. And um, well, there's, there's some people who are interested in keeping the dam, but they don't have the money to take on all of that. And uh, also he is interested in restoring the health of the river. He would like to see it being free flowing again. And so those are his motivations. Um, so uh, what I would just show you on the next slide is, well, there's an old map to the right, which is kind of fun, shows it's been there for a while. And on the left, this is a map that also shows you the depth. And so one of the issues is that, okay, when you take out the dam, what happens? First of all, the sediment is not very contaminated. So that's great. It would just be um, held back a bit as the water level drops and there's quite a clear channel still there. So managing sediment, which can be a huge expense, isn't gonna be a big issue. The bigger question is the town's water supply. So the town's water supply is upstream of the dam. But what this map shows, and this is an incredibly fortuitous situation, is that there's a natural dam upstream and not very far upstream at Pollard Street. And you can see here, it's kind of a, a it's called the Fordway Bar and it's been there forever. Um, it's a geological feature that is not going anywhere. People have tried to get rid of it. Uh, they haven't succeeded. And it's called Fordway because it's where people used to cross the river. And it's quite a wide, shallow ledge that goes across the river. And so the water level above the Fordway Bar, once the dam is gone, is not going to be very different. So the town's water supply is protected. Uh, a study was done on that specific question because nobody was going to remove the dam if it was going to affect the town's water supply. Drinking water is foremost in people's minds. And so a study was devised, the details of it um, were developed in coordination with the town of Philrica, and um, the study was done and it showed that there would not be any significant impact on the, on the water supply. And that is illustrated in the next slide. Actually, sorry, the next slide actually shows a few features, the bridges, the Philrica water intake, um, the bridges, et cetera. Uh, and then the next following slide, they analyzed, if you look at this is a sort of a squished uh, and exaggerated 
image of the, the topography, the ups and downs of the river channel. So if you did a slice right down the middle of the river, this is what it would look like. And the bit in gray is the Fordway bar. And you can see that it sticks up above everything else. And um, in low flow periods, the, um, it's holding back the water. So that's why even during a drought, there would be very little impact upstream. And during a flood, there would also not be a huge impact upstream. Um, and again, a small impact upstream because I don't know if you may have heard this bit of history, but it's fascinating. Yes, I can quickly squeeze it in. That Thoreau, Henry David Thoreau was hired by the farmers in Wayland to argue their case at State House, saying that this dam should be removed because it was flooding their fields. And he went and he did that, but he was so fascinated by the question that he trained himself in hydrology, spent time in the Harvard Library, uh, figuring out how to understand the whole system, studied it for years and decided he was wrong. That actually what was causing the flooding upstream was all of the bridges and the soil erosion and all of the, you know, this whole place was clear cut, lots of erosion of sand into the rivers, creating sandbars. That's what was creating the flooding upstream of the farmer's um, fields. So uh, he never did go back and uh, <clears throat> correct the record. He got distracted um, by other things. But there's a fascinating book called The Boatman, if anybody wants to read it. It's a beautifully written book about his whole study and his maps and everything around the Concord Museum. So, so reference to Herb Clark and his father being involved in that whole study too. Stephen and, Davis wrote you there you go. There you go. So that's in a nutshell, um, the next slide just shows in more detail the water intake where um, there could be as much of a, as a four inch drop during a drought, but that's out of five feet of water over that intake. So four inch drop would not be causing a problem. And that, that was confirmed by the town's own consultants. Two of them confirmed that result. So we felt with that, we could move forward. Ors was selected as the, the project manager because we're on the ground, we know the communities, um, we're very familiar with the rivers, we were monitoring, for example, the water quality in the river, uh, we were willing to take it on. So we're the project manager, we weren't the ones who came up with the ideas, really the owner who wanted to get rid of the dam. And there are a lot of partners, which you can see um, on the last page, Federal level, the folks who work on oceans and fisheries restoration, some of the money will come from that. Um, fish, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is providing funding. The state is providing funding. Um, and then local partners as well. And also the Wild and Scenic River Stewardship Council, which Ralph is on, um, is supporting this project. So there's a lot of people involved, a lot of, lot of information. And if you want to know more, um, there's the under the slide that says public outreach. If you scroll down, oh yeah, actually I'll go back in a minute. That place has got so much great information. It's got a very cool story map. It goes all the way from glaciation to today. It's pretty fun. And it's beautiful graphics and stuff that explain all this, this history of this. So this is your history too. It's not just peculiar to, to um, Bill Ricca. And the project website, you can sign up for updates. You can see all the studies, everything is there. We wanna be as transparent as possible, hear people's questions, get their questions answered. Now, if you don't mind backing up a slide, cause I had popped that in there. This isn't in your handout cause I just got it. And it's just the process of permitting it. It's not, um, it takes up almost a year to permit something like this, which is kind of surprising. Um, that's okay. Yeah, just back up one slide. There we go. It is, that's really hard for you to see. I'm sorry. Um, but it is, uh, it's now on your, on your computer. So you can, <laughs> you can see it if you want from there. But anyway, we're starting with MEPA, which is the Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act, which is just an information gathering mechanisms to see like, do we have all the information necessary to know what are the environmental impacts of this project? So it's, that's the first one. We're filing that in May this month. Um, it'll go through that. There'll be, there may be a public hearing, but there's certainly an opportunity to submit comments from the public, from anyone, state agencies, federal agencies, everybody will comment. And then after that, it's gone through that process. There are a few other permits from the state, 
from the federal government. And then the last step is the Bilrica Conservation Commission, because obviously it's a wetland, it's a river, it's all the resources that are under the Wetlands Protection Act. Most of those are affected um, by this project. So it will be submitted as an ecological restoration project, which is sort of a special category um, where it's seen as a net benefit to wetlands interests um, will, be, will be had from it. And, and then that's it. And then um, all, if all that goes smoothly, we can proceed with actually removing the dam. Um, there were also, there's a lot of consult, consultation on historic aspects of the dam with the local historic commission, the state historic commission, so that there can be some mitigation put in place. All these dam projects have history. And so it may be an interpretive panel, it could be maybe a small boardwalk, it could be whatever is agreed to, memorandum of understanding is written up and that is funded as part of the project. So um, I'll stop there. And oh, there's a whole lot of Native American people involved with the Native American. That's people. right, it's, there's an important history, you know, at all different stages before the dam, at, with the dam and they'll be making a new history. Um, probably better water quality. It's easier to paddle on a boat because it's very hard to get around that dam currently in a boat. Uh, better fishing. Who knows what the new history will be? So. Um, on this. this is breaking news. Discussion on this has been going on for almost three to five years. Up. Yeah. Yes. Leaving Bedford, how far can you, will you be able to go without hitting an obstruction like a dam? Mm -hmm. Going upstream? Downstream. I know upstream. Oh, upstream. Yes. Okay. So downstream, there is a dam at Centennial Island in Lowell, which the, doesn't bother the fish because there's a fishway there, and they're actually going to be improving the fishway. Um, after that, it's straight shot until you get to the Essex Dam in Lawrence, which is a big hydropower facility. So you have to go around that, and I think from there, it's straight to the ocean. Hmm. So actually a few questions. <clears throat> How will this affect the um, the remnants of Middlesex Canal? Mm -hmm. Because if you're dropping it X number of feet, right. there won't be, yeah, there used to be or was water going into some of that and how mm -hmm. far it went, who knows, but how will that affect the Middlesex Canal? And maybe they won't have a uh, positive view on this. Mm -hmm. And the other question would be, based on you bringing the level of this water down mm -hmm. a number of feet. In that section before Pollard right. Street, yes. But it will bring it, it will, down, definitely. which will then actually recede the edges of the river, mm -hmm. which is going to add more. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it's probably... Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that, that the edges might be owned by the abutters, in which case it, it won't be able to be used for a boardwalk or anything. It'll just be additional land added to the abutters, or has that been looked into? Good, very good questions, both of them. So the first one is that, yes, the, there are, the Middlesex Canal exists in remnants still, and some of those have some little bits of water and then some don't. But right near the impoundment here, the, the mill pond, as it's called, there is some water in it. And there was a floating towpath that went across that was actually floating. And then the, the mules would pull, would have like a walkway that they could pull so they could get across the river, which is kind of cool. Um, that doesn't exist anymore because it was, you know, made out of wood and whatnot and doesn't exist. Um, so the, the trick will be really that there will be less water in the remnant of the canal. But what could be done, because they're building a new museum right there, that will help people visualize what was it like with the towpath and what was it like when the canal was existing. The river will still be there, but the wide ponded part won't be there. So that's a question. And, and absolutely, there are members of the Middlesex Canal Association and Commission that don't like this idea. They would rather keep it exactly the way it is. And so your other question on the... Um, the ownership. Oh, the, the ownership. Yes. Yeah, so the water level will drop in that section. Now, some of they're right now figuring out ownership because it's title deed research, right? Um, so the main part where it's ponded, that would might be available for some public amenities. Um, but upstream, it gets it gets narrower naturally pretty soon. 
it wouldn't necessarily get much narrower. There might be, there will be a little more floodplain. Um, so the flooding would be less bad. So people, because there are banks on the river, it's not going to like turn into a narrow thing. It'll just be a shallower thing and maybe more rocky and some little waterfalls and riffles and things like that. So what will happen is when there is a big flood, it will not get as close to the homes along the river. Um, and I don't know the answer to, do their property lines go to the center line of the river? Do they go to the bank of the river? But we don't expect the bank in most of it to change very much. It will still be there. It would just be shallower water. By definition, if it's a, by definition, if it's a river, mm -hmm. you don't have vertical walls. So if you're dropping it, mm -hmm. the width is going to get narrower, which in which case, the land on the edges will go out into that. And it for every, you know, let's say you're dropping it 10 feet. I don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, you're actually dropping it all, about eight feet. You've got to have about 15 or 20 feet that is going to be narrowing up on each side is my guess. Well, it's interesting. If you think of the river as a V-shaped thing, that would be true. But it's more of a flat-bottomed U. So if you look at the impoundment slide, you can see that it's kind of, it doesn't have a lot of gradation, like behind the houses on the Western side, it goes, it's sort of, it's pretty flat on the bottom. So it really depends on the river. This is the thing. And that's why you, we need to do, you know, all these studies in advance to predict what's gonna happen. Now, what you said, where the impounded, the ponded section is, where it says mill pond, mm -hmm. that's extremely shallow and very mucky, right? It's just like this, it's feet and feet of muck. And so very light stuff. So that will drain, get more, a little more solid and turn into wetland um, or floodplain. And it will not be, it won't look like open water anymore except during a big storm. So the tree, yeah. oh, I'm, oh. I was just gonna say quick you know, question for both of you. Would that decrease if people had to carry flood insurance, would that possibly? Help the abutters. It could decrease the amount of flood insurance coverage that pe some people would require. What would happen is after this is done, there would be a, a revision of map, um, floodplain map with FEMA, uh, if there is a significant change in it. Because some people, when they when FEMA recently, fairly recently, redid the maps, some people suddenly had to buy flood insurance, and they were not happy about it. This might change that depending on where they live. It, yeah. it could. It won't make it worse. And it could possibly positively affect others depending on whether you're upstream or downstream right. of the dam. Well, the thing is downstream, nothing is going to change. And this is the tricky thing about these dams is they don't control floodwaters. They're just a bathtub. So there's no way that they, they don't manipulate it. They don't make it so, oh, there's a flood coming. Let's lower the water level to hold it back. They can't do any of that. So if you look what it looks like downstream is the way it's gonna look like upstream. And the thing for people downstream, the dam can't fail anymore. And that would be catastrophic. So that's actually a benefit. So you've hit your time. Oh, there's somebody online maybe. Yeah. Go ahead, Tracy. So how does it, how is this when the, once you get through, so you're talking, the process before the dam actually gets deconstructed is probably a year or so out, correct? Correct. So how is this going to affect the traffic on that road going to the commuter rail in Bill Ricca? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of people go that route and you either the only way to get to it without going that way is going all the way around the backside or coming from Lowell or Tewksbury side. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't honestly know the answer, except that the work happens in the river and in that parking lot that's to the east side of the dam. And it also is done very quickly. It's not like a highway construction project where it's like months and, you know, of, of disruption. It's quite quick. I think the biggest traffic jam will be watching it <laughs> come down. Um, so I, it's a great question though, and I haven't heard anybody ask that before. And so what we try to do is add new questions to our frequently asked questions, which is posted on the website and, and get a really official good answer for you. The dam is not the bridge. The bridge, the bridge is, is totally unaffected by the project. 
Yeah, but I would think that while the de deconstruction is going on for safety reasons, they would close the bridge. I don't know if they, I don't know, but hmm. we will find out. They'll most likely draw down the water right. to, to where it's. Tracy, they'll most likely draw down the water to the level it will be. And therefore, when they start taking off the dam, the dam isn't holding any water back. So there won't be that concern with the uh, bridge as much because there is no flow coming that it's going to affect it. Oh, well, that's good to know. I know a lot of people right. who use that commuter rail, and I know that's the way they go. And that's the quickest way to go without having to go through the side roads or around the other side. For sure. I, I got to add one one thing. The what will happen is it will open the Concord River for spawning of the heron and the alewife that yep. swim up there. It will open over a hundred miles of shores coastline for those fish all the way to Lake Kachichuit. Uh, they were tagging fish at the Bedford boat ramp and putting them in two years ago. They all knew Allison when I was chatting with them. Mm -hmm. They said they tagged the fish and fish from our area migrate back on out they you know it's a two-way deal when once they spawn they leave and go again they go up as far as Halifax Nova Scotia they go up as far as Squam Lake and they go down towards New Jersey so our fish come in from all over the place and uh, an important contribution tag your <laughs> I don't know if they appreciate it being tagged but so I'm going to officially end the meeting thank you so much You're very welcome. This is so thank you. interesting and feel free to email me or call anything if you have more questions. We're like happy to answer questions. Okay. And if anybody online still has questions, then maybe we should keep out your hands if you want to do a nice couple more course. minutes. Oh, yeah. that, that would be me twice. <laughs> Did I hear ice cream? What was ice cream? What? Um, <laughs> you have to, I'll... Are you in there? Okay. Anybody I'll wants to any? frequently yep. ask questions. Oh, uh, I'll send that out to you. Yeah. I can send you a I I can, you got I send yeah, you I got you. PDF. Oh, that would be great. Okay. Ralph, so yeah, yeah, Sue and I sent you an email, yeah, email to sign up for ice cream. I need her. Yeah, sign me, sign me up ice cream too. Okay, ice cream. Yeah. Okay. He's selling a Vic and me too. Ralph, did you get me and uh, Sue Ann? I got you. Yeah. Okay. Got me, Ralph. I got you, Bob. Yeah. You got Tracy. I got Tracy. Okay. Oh, um, you guys are locked in. I'll put the note out to everybody else. No <laughs> photography in the ice cream making system. Top secret stuff. <laughs> Otherwise, the big no, guys will come out in front of the stand. <laughs> Field is the and then, yeah, then what happens? Yeah. 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 This is really Allison. This is so good. Yeah. Thanks. You. You've been my. You've been my favorite teacher. I've learned so much about this little river I grew up on. Yeah. We only own the 50 yards in front of the boat ramp. That's it.